Study your time away with the frowns. We're gonna make super awesome sounds. Virtual writer and Ableton. The wobbles will never end its studio time. Hi, I'm Virtual Riot, and today we'll be making a song from scratch, or at least the general layout. Uh, we'll see how far we'll get. And I'll be focusing a little bit on bass and synth design, and also talk about like composition, arrangement, call and response, and how I write my melodies and chords and that kind of stuff. Um, all right, so let's go. Okay, before we start, a lot of people have asked me about my template project right here. And as you might notice, I have increased the overall display size, so um, everything's a little bit bigger, might be easier to read now, and I'm in the little corner here, also a little bit bigger, so you can see me better. Yay! But yeah, this is my default project file that I created a while ago, which I'm sticking to. Usually after a while, this just becomes really messy anyway, but this is what I like starting off. So I have four groups, one's called drums, one's called bass, synths, and samples. In there, I have one drum rack called kick and snare, for kicks and snares, one drummer I called cymbals. Then in the bass group, it's just an uh, init serum. In the synth group, I've got an init massive for all time's sake and a simpler. And then in the samples group, we've got three empty audio tracks. And everything except for the kick and the snare goes to this sidechain audio track over here, which is set on in and has a shaper box on it, which is set to get triggered by MIDI. And the trigger track is right down below. So I can easily move a MIDI clip from the kick and snare track down here to the trigger track. And then I immediately have my sidechain trigger. There's nothing on the master except a utility. And that's pretty much it. So I've already started a little idea, don't be mad at me, because I didn't want to go into this without anything in mind at all. It's just this little like chord thing that I made, and I can show you how. And I selected some drums, which are from the last episode. Um, one of the kicks, and a couple of the snares layered. This one kind of is a reverb. So the idea here is that this is kind of like the chord fake out for a drop. So we would go... like something there. That drop part would go until here. And then we repeat this uh, maybe four times in total, every time starting with this little fake out. And we'll do some variations for this every time. It's kind of my idea, like maybe have this lead melody here. Like change, play different notes, or the second time around, the second oscillator here. Goes like up an octave or something, just like some variation in there. I can just show you what these chords are made of real quick. So as you saw, this we got the lead serum. This is one of my serum presets from my packs. And then down here, I made a serum that's just a bunch of saws stacked with a comp filter going up and then down, kind of just creating a flanger effect. I can put all these presets in the folder for Patreons, obviously. And then we got a stack of Nexuses here. I think two of which are pianos. just to give the chords some sort of attack. And as you can hear, there's also some flanginess going on here, which I'll show you in a bit. This happens on the group that they're all in. Two more next eye, just for like extra thickness layers. As you can see, I have EQ'd them quite heavily. Like I take out a lot of these mids here because they start stacking up with all these layers because basically all of these sounds kind of have a lot going on there. And with Super Saws being stacked, you also get a lot of top end, so you gotta soften this off a little bit. The pianos, I wanted to come through because they kind of made these chords a little more staccato, like give them a little bit of attack. And I like that. Up here, I took a vocal sample and put it in a simpler. And this flange effect is coming from this corpus that's on this group, so I got it set to tube. And then I'm automating the tune here, you can see over here, to like go up. So it's creating that and then you know, down at the end here. And again, like a pretty strong EQ here, because then that has to layer with the serum. And that sounds pretty thick already. We got a bass here that is just the classic saw with distortion and white noise. And then I'm also cutting out a lot of mids here because the chords are already doing that. I don't know if I want to go triplets or something, so the idea is to fill this little gap here. So that's kind of the idea. But before we get started on that, I would like to come up with an intro melody that goes along with these chords, sort of. Maybe we can find a riff and I can design a little synth sound and you can see how I do that. And then we'll go into the build up and then we'll do the drop. That sounds like a plan. Okay, so I've made this MIDI track with a serum and I have this nice little preset over here that I made, which 
uses a peak filter to actually give it tonality. So it's only using the noise oscillator and I put in a Foley recording of mine that by itself just sounds like this. It's like a random pan hit or something. And then there's like a little bit of like this low pass going on here. It's not really doing that much. A little bit of delay and reverb. But this filter is key tracking and kind of like accentuating this one harmonic here. And then I just, as like an additional little feature, I added, as you can hear, there's like a random modulator on the pitch of the noise. Which you don't really notice anymore once this is on. It just adds like variation to it. So if I hit the same notes over and over again, they sound a little bit different. This is like a trick from physical modeling where the input noise that goes into your exciter kind of variates every time you hit a note, just a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, or like slightly pitch modulated or something so that it sounds more like a organic sound, like a real recording or something. Okay, so we're just going to take the chords from over here that we have so far, the... And then we're just going to go from there. So I'm going to move these over here. It's a little high. And I'm going to edit these to... I feel like this note's a little too much. Again, let's take that out. And then I'm kind of feeling like these kawaii chords over here. And you know exactly which one's coming next. So it gets something like this. Yeah, I think that works. So this will kind of be our chord progression for the intro. It's about two bars long, or no, four bars? Yeah, nice, four bars long. So we'll do that four times, and maybe after two times, I would like one of these pianos, maybe not exactly these, but a piano sound to come in and kind of do the same chords, but in this kind of house rhythm, where it's like... That kind of rhythm of two quarter notes and then dotted eighth notes. Oop, that is way too low. As you can hear by themselves, they sound rather thin. And I realized I panned this one right and this one left. So let's just duplicate this, move it down here. So we have it by itself. We can take off a little bit of this and center it. Yep. Okay. And now let's arrange that. Maybe add some additional notes here for fanciness. It's like some variation so it doesn't get that boring that this chord is being hit so many times over and over. Ah, but, but probably, probably have to do this in the same spot there. See, does this go along with the pluck? Sort of. Uh, maybe I'll just switch to the piano and not have the plug playing in the back. Let me look up some different pianos. This one's like a little aggressive. Maybe there are better ones. This one sounds nice. It doesn't have this automatic octave added that a lot of the Nexus piano pitches have. So I'm just going to... Ooh, that sounded great. And I feel like this screams for a breakbeat over this. So I'm just going to go find one real quick. Um, maybe we can layer one from Spicy Rhythm Drums with a Vengeance one or something just for that classic feel. We got some breakbeats in here. I think that first one is just right. This is at 145 though, and we are at 150. So if I warp drum loops, if it's like a full drum loop or a hi-hat loop, I like to use a repitch since it has to make it faster keeps the audio quality and just changes the pitch accordingly. Sometimes, especially if you want to keep your transients and everything clean, that is a good warp mode for drums. Other than that, obviously it beats. But sometimes I like how it changes the pitch a little bit. Makes it a little bit different from the original sample as well. Cool, and now let's add a vengeance loop as well real quick. 
So 140 again, repeat. Kind of have this doubling kick drum because this one does dum 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 and the other one does dum dum dum. I kind of want it to be like the vengeance loop. So I'm just going to move these around. Maybe the second time around, we can have it go like this. And at the end, I think it needs a little bit of a fill. Maybe just like a kick drum over here, like this one. That's cool, that's a little bit of variation there. And then just for good measure, at the aim and break. Yeah, just the classic one, why not? Okay, this guy's also at 140. Always sounds good pitched up, so repitch. I could go into processing these and like putting effects on them right now, but that would take too much time right now. We can do that later. I want to arrange this more and write the melody. So let's do that. Okay, I'm sorry, but I did a little bit of off-screen work here. Um, I duplicated uh, the piano down here to the serum plug. So it just plays along, plays the same rhythm. I deleted the extra octave, so that sounds kind of nice. The volume is automated a little bit lower so that it just mixes in a little bit better. And then up here for the drums, I did a little bit of processing where this break bead a little bit away off the low end and add a little bit more high end. The aim and break is untouched. And then all of these uh, together go into a group where I put them through good old Stab, which is a four band transient designer. Without, this whole group sounds like this. And with. Kind of makes the transients more snappy. Maybe we can do halfway dry wet. So we still have a little bit of this like cool noisy background. Added a bit of an EQ, maybe this little bit of harshness is actually cool because it sounds like dirty and old. And then one of my favorite things to use recently, the auto pen. So many ways to do cool stuff with it. In this case, I often, especially if it's like super noisy drum material with lots of tails, but you want it to be punchy and tight and you don't have crazy transient shapers, sometimes it's really just fine to take like the saw down and don't use like the stereo offsets thing, just put it like all on basically mono. And then uh, on 16th notes, it'll just... Enhance that super t -t 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 fast groove. But then, if you change it to eighth notes, for example, completely different feel, or even quarter notes work. That kind of changes your micro time perception. But I think on eighth notes, this is quite cool for this. Just slightly, because I do like that noisiness of the cymbals in the aim and break there. Okay, next I want to add a few intro elements here. Like, I don't want this tutorial to take forever, so I'm just going to use one of the claps that we made in the last episode. Maybe this one. And then add a really long reverb. So kind of like a clap impact, but we're going to make it ourselves. I'm just not going to try and not use third-party samples so that I can give this project file or the stems or anything of this to you after this video on my Patreon in good faith. Yeah, something like that. But again, the kind of that, that sound to be a little more enhanced. So maybe a little bit of a boost at 1K. And then let's see what else can we do. Not convinced. I think this thing is just too slow. So I'm going to first try and pitch it up. Yeah, I prefer that. And maybe we can even add a kick drum below it. I'm just going to grab a random one. Okay, very loud. But this is kind of something I do when I design my impacts. I would take a kick drum for the low end, and then I would also add a reverb, but only the lows, rather long. Get like this kind of rumble. And then also, usually I wouldn't like the top end that much, so I would, even before the reverb, let's just cut off like most of this. Yeah, kind of like that. That's fine. That rumbles. That rumbles really nicely. That could rumble a little longer, actually. 
And I would like a pad to come in here. Let's just grab one from the good old atmosphere pack. So uh, what key are we in? I think we're in D-sharp minor. Okay. I'm going to try this one and just pitch it into the... And then usually for the intro, I like for this to come up. Obviously, uh, we need to fix that transition a little bit, first of all, because now it gets rhythmical, but the pad is still sustained. I want to make the pad first go louder and then have eighth notes auto pan on it. But it should come in here already, so it kind of prepares you for a beat coming in. I just want to see what it sounds like an octave up. That's dope, I like that. I will add just a really simple serum bass here that plays along with those chords. Literally just good old saw with a low catch or low pass that just plucks along. And I could probably just duplicate this and just put that over here. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. I still want a build up here. Halfway through here, we could start. And then, bam, 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 bam. Usually, if I was making like a full track, I'd probably. Yeah, come on, let's do it. I don't want to. I don't want to be like super cheap here. Let's just duplicate this. Remove them drums. Remove that piano. And then you go back down an octave. And since the beat is gone, we're going to sustain again, maybe a little quieter. And then halfway through, you're going to start rising with just putting this on warp, clip, transposition, and let's give it a full bar here of a pause at the end, maybe. It could kind of continue doing this just to build like tension, like and so on, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, now I'm being sort of cheap with this, but let's just see what it sounds like. That note is not being triggered because it's held from the previous bar. I think I'll just go with, screw it, this is fine. And then I would add different washouts, which are available on my Patreon already. I don't know if I put all of them in there, but I think since we're going to use a lot of these now, I'll put them all in there. Cool. And for this one, maybe also the octave grain pitch. I sound fine. Um, yeah, I'll figure out what we put in that gap. That's always like a big question at some point. Sometimes I will make a full intro and a full drop and then just I left the gap before the drop empty and then I'm just sitting there like, what do I put in there? <laughs> I would maybe like a melody over this, like a little melody thing or some sparkles over this intro. Um, that's what we're going to do next. Okay, for this, I'm just going to make a little melodic thing, a little lead or pluck with serum. And I was kind of thinking that I want it to play along with that rhythm. And then it can sometimes break out and have some extra notes. So for now, I'm just going to... We'll just start with having like a sine wave that goes pling. I like using a little bit of release so I can just draw tiny notes, but they'll still like ring out. That was very clunky how I put that in, but maybe something like that. Maybe we can like arp it up to that note. Might sound weird. Maybe just those. Hmm. Yeah, 
yeah, that kind of works. It kind of like leads back to the initial note here. I feel like in this gap, there should be something happening. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, and then I decided, and I'm sorry I also did this off camera, I decided that I want everything to like rise here. And then stop here with a laser or like wind down tape stop. And then have with like a kick drum on both of these and a crash. And like a drum fill leading into... Because then the transition isn't that, like it is abrupt, but it leads in with this fill. So it kind of prepares you a little bit for it. And that kind of catches you off guard that this fill is coming in. So that's kind of cool. So let's make some risers and build up stuff after I turn the sine wave into something more interesting. So first of all, something I like to do to make uh, synth sounds a little more like analog sounding is I like to link LFOs to the master tune. We're just going to do LFO 1 and 2 bipolar and then turn the BPM sync off and have just like a really slight up and down drift. And even if you'd like set this to just 1 or something and it's still too much, you can just dial it in with the output fader here. So have it a little less. LFO 2 is going to do the same but a lot faster, like maybe 7 hertz. That's already a lot cuter. I like that. Let's see if the analog bass drum sign holds like a few more harmonics that make this interesting. Mm, yeah, sounds weird. I did like the sound of the sine wave, but what I also like is if I like add just like an octave on top. Oh, like the little bit of like the second octave above. And then one of my favorite things to do is use sample rate reduction and put that on the sound, but only with like a, like a really short envelope turning the mix up here just for a second. Kind of giving the sound this little glossy attack. And then by changing the sample rate here, and kind of change how this attack is supposed to sound. So like up there, it's kind of high frequency, that's nice. At the Nexus and Delay reverb, I just called it that because it kind of reminds me of the Nexus stock reverb and delay. This is still a little bit long here on that. For the second time around, I kind of wanted to... Da, da, da. So this is going to be rising here. And then everything's going to stop anyway. So it's going to turn the volume down there. Add one of my favorite little stop effects. That one. We could use this one in reverse at the end here. Uh, I'd rather actually use this one as well, because it's a little longer. All right, a little quieter. All right, let's put some kick drums here. Maybe these are like a little intense for this beginning intro sequence. I'm just going to grab a soft one from Splice real quick. Yeah, the decap ones are pretty nice. Let's just use one of those. And also trigger the sidechain. Just got to make sure these notes are on a C. And I feel like for more impact here, some of these chord stacks might have to join in. Maybe some of these stacks here. I feel like I need to copy this to at least some of these layers just to keep that thickness.
Also, they are still under the spell of this flanger, which we don't really need for that part. So you just come in over here. And you guys also get just a little bit shorter. So this is like a little more staccato -y. Very Mo Shop style, a little bit goes into that direction. This bass can be a little tougher. So let's add a little bit of distortion here. Maybe automate that too. And add the mini fat. Now it's getting a little aggressive on the high end, so let's have a look at it with EQ. Better. I think overall this piano can be a little brighter. Yeah. I want to automate the volume to go down here, so we... Yay, that's cool. Just for like glue, a uh, little fall down. I don't know why this one sounds cheesy to me, but... Just in the background, we should also have like a crash here that's a little bit longer. Some ambience style crash, maybe with some reverb on it so it's a little longer. Something like that has a very strong attack. So maybe just fade that in a little bit, turn that boy down in volume and reverb. Lots of it. Yeah, I like that. Get rid of that. Cool, this is going somewhere. I like that. This is reverb on the piano that might be a little much. Let's reduce that. Cool so far. The drums are really not coming through anymore now. Gotta go at it with EQ. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Just want to compare auto pan at zero and at a hundred percent. Yep, the truth lies somewhere in between. All right, final sprint on the intro because I want to get this done and I want to get to the drop. I changed the melody a little bit here. Because that flows better and then that little extra note there. And then I want the melody to still play along under the chords here, but maybe with a support nexus. And there is a plug that I've used a bunch. I think it's this one. But it just sounds so nice and airy and glossy and chimey. Maybe an octave lower. Kind of sticks out a little too much. And probably right here. That one's fine, but like these two for sure. We'd rather need like the top end of it. Can even have like slightly shorter release, I think. Yeah, let's release more reverb. Uh, I keep getting interrupted because my dog is running in here and barking at me. So um, I added some symbols up here for those hits. They're not going through the sidechain group. I, do I have sidechain trigger here? Yeah, they can go through the sidechain group. Uh, select, sidechain. This one can be a little longer. All right, I turned up this layer of the, of the whole Nexus layer a bunch here and automated the volume a bit. It was lacking some fullness. A bunch of this will also come with the mastering in the end, like loudness and clarity wise. I'm not going too hard right now. We could like OTT a lot of this, which is what I do usually, but not always necessary. Let me EQ these real quick. So yeah, this one was getting really loud back here, so I automated the volume down, and then I'm gonna do one of my favorite things. So I put both of these in a group, and I'm gonna use the echo. And I sometimes like just turning it on at certain points, so with like a lot of feedback. And if I didn't turn it on there and it was on all the time, it would just like collect all the notes sort of in a very muddy delay, which can be cool, but I just want, I just want these over here. So let's see what this sounds like.
a little noisy, maybe a little slower on the delay time, but I still want this to like, yeah, dotted fourths and general fourths. Let's see. Yeah, that's cool. That gives like a nice little ambience here. Now I would even put... Ah, this is the only thing I don't like about this thing. It does not stop. I have to like automate it to turn off here. And then if I click here, now silence. Good. I would add a frequency shifter. So that this thing starts rising here. Beautiful. Let's actually add some risers real quick because those are a little bit essential here. I'm just going to go into my sample pack. Yeah, that one sounds kind of kawaii-ish. But not enough. Need a longer one. Let's just do the sustained boy. But I do want to like, I'm just going to make this faster so it fits. Yeah, almost lands on the hmm. I'm gonna pitch it up just a tiny bit. Yep, that sounds better. And then maybe we can also, just so it's a little more interesting, add an auto pan. I'm gonna use lots of auto pans today. It would be cool if it did the dun 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 dun, dun, dun wouldn't it? Uh, screw it, let's do it. For that, I think I'm just gonna use ShaperBox and I'm not gonna draw that whole bam, 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 thing in there, but instead we are, where are you? There. Instead, we are gonna MIDI trigger it and I'm just gonna have like a saw down rather fast on a, let's do quarter notes, MIDI trigger on one shot and then I'm gonna add a dedicated MIDI channel down here that goes into 33, already going to ShaperBox. Nice. And now I actually, I think I can just copy that bass MIDI, right? I might have to root all notes on the C. No, I don't have to. Nice. Nice. Uh, saved myself a lot of work there. I do want a little more noise, like noisy riser at the end there, like some white noise stuff. And maybe just for even more freshness. Come on, you. Maybe not even that much fit in, so I can have like... Yeah, that's cool. I do want to put in a vocal sample, maybe something cute, maybe a Pokemon sound or maybe a, a Pikachu or something. But I do want to do these da, da, da chords again there. These ones. Let's just take these over there, but make a new synth. And I just want it to be like a really cute and cheap sounding 8-bit kind of sound. So back to Serum. <laughs> Even just the in it saw is kind of cool, I guess. Just not that low. We want it to sound cute. What are we going to do again? We, first of all, 8-bit. We're going to need a square wave. Then uh, I want it to sound trembly again. So LFO1, I need like a preset for this. That just, I just got to make like a default preset for me that already has this sort of assigned to a knob and that just is like named analog or something. And that just does these things where the master tune is being modulated ever so slightly. And then just a tiny amount. Obviously too much. Let's dial it down over here. Yeah, that's cool. That's kind of what I was thinking of. Maybe pulse width modulation. Yeah, that sounds kind of cute. That's sort of what I was looking for. And just for... For flavor. Yep, why not? And we can make this thing sound even thinner by... Removing a bunch of frequencies. Just like the contrast of just this and it's like super mono, doesn't have a lot of highs, doesn't have a lot of lows. And then the next thing that comes in has a lot of highs, has a lot of bass. So you get this contrast. And I think that's really important, especially in dance music, because it's all about like the highs and the lows and the contrast between sections. Maybe this is the moment where a little bit of OTT would do the trick. Oh, I can already hear people sampling me saying things about OTT.
you like a cute little I'm just going to make it because I can't be bothered to look for a sample that does exactly what I want right now. And it's just such a simple, easy sound. I just need a sine wave to go. Ooh. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, just that. Sometimes it's that simple. We do need a little bit of rising things here. We got this pad, but I kind of want to see if I can have another one in the same key coming in towards the end, a little louder. Or actually, we do have a couple of nice like reverse sweep in things. This one. The volume of this intro is really tame compared to this next bit. It's not bad. It's nice to have like a little more dynamics in your songs. But I know it's bad if I play this to someone and then they play the song, they adjust their volume knob and then in a certain part of the song they like turn it down a little bit or up. That's like how I know, ah, okay, the overall leveling wasn't perfect. That's kind of why I have this utility here on the master. And sometimes once the track is done, I'll automate the volume of the entire track a little bit up and down, especially before the drop. I like to make it a little bit quieter and then on the drop, go back to zero. Also make the stereo width go more and more mono during the buildup. And then it gets really wide again. Actually, we can do that right now because now we know where the buildup's going to be. Yay, contrast. And then usually after this utility, I'll have my ozone or another multiband compressor. So I do this before, not after the mastering chain. So it kind of just changes how loud it's going into the compression. It still has an effect on the overall dynamic feeling of the different parts and all. But um, that's just like a little bit of work I do there if I messed up in the process and this isn't all leveled perfectly, like between the sections. The sounds between themselves in the sections should be leveled properly, I guess. Okay, I do want a little more ear candy here. In the second heavy bass design, I made these vocal sounds that are like... I do like these. Oh, this is a... And then maybe... Nope. Mm, time you better. And then this one also like... kind of has to be the that's pretty it does have like a lot of high end there and just like the other things in the intro i want this to fade in with a low pass but i'm not going to use the auto filter i don't know i like this more because i have more control over the slope This one here, just because that second echo isn't happening anymore because of this fill, I'm gonna still add it, reverse it, and then have it. Yeah, yeah. Now volume-wise, this sounds pretty comparable. We need some glue between these parts here. And also, I did want to add a drum fill here, and then we can also add one at the end of this section. I'm going to be a little lazy and go into the spicy rhythm drums too. Yes, okay. This one's at 140 though, and I want to use repitch again. Okay, don't want to clash with. Okay. That's cool, but not enough. So let's layer that with the second one. Nope, that's from Redline. I feel like this might actually work because I just need like a few quick hits there. 145, repitch, and then just at the end here. And this, this flam, I want, I want it over here. It lines up with the other one. 
Yeah, that's cool. Group you so I can EQ you together so I don't have to do that twice. And bam, 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 bam. Here. <laughs> And since these are 16th notes, if I want them to be even more stabby, auto pan. The poor man's transient designer. Yay! Okay, I totally forgot that I had the plan for these vocals to also appear in this main section and maybe even in the build-up. Let's see what we can do with them. Yeah, very long fade-outs here. Let's just duplicate them over here. This EQ is going to go all the way up, so... That they're going to be really bright. I want to automate that there is a second EQ coming in. Maybe not that, maybe something. Oh, never mind. I don't want to do this before. And a little bit of OTT, but also auto pan once again, but this time on sine waves on maybe eighth notes. So. <laughs> The OTT kind of makes sure that this fade out, this reverb tail here, stays consistent in volume. So we got to automate these two to turn on over here. Then also, because of the OTT, we now have some aggressive frequencies in the top end. Ah, I can see them right here. Every time you might notice if there's like something aggressive on the top end that just sounds like ear piercing, it's usually between 3 and 4 kilohertz because that's where the human ear is the most sensitive. <laughs> Little tangent on the science of the human ear. Our ears are obviously not like linear. Different frequencies, our ears respond differently too. So for example, with sub bass, our ears can take a lot more volume before it hurts or causes us physical pain. And the range around 3 to 4K is like kind of where a baby crying sound is kind of like in that frequency range. But also, I think evolutionary, that helped us to survive because in the forest, like the breaking of twigs or someone walking through leaves, like it was important for our survival to be able to hear those frequencies very clearly. You can actually look up the Fletcher Munson curve, which shows you exactly like which frequencies you are more susceptible to, which is going to sound louder to you at the same volume. So that's usually as soon as something sounds harsh, it's usually within that range. 6K is another like annoying place because a lot of sibilance, a lot of S noises from uh, singing and talking are in there. So I'm EQing, I'm actually EQing like 3.4K and 6K out of this microphone that I'm talking into right here so that every time I say an S, it doesn't hurt your ears. That's how much I love you. Actually, I had the idea to, because, um, hooray, I have reached over 500 Patreons on my Patreon to dedicate this song to you awesome people helping me out so much. And it's directed at you all. And we're going to use this really cheesy sample that I found on Splice that I, I know I have used before. I'm just calling to say I, I love you. Yeah, that one. And we're just going to add the, I'm just calling to say right before. So it's like... Cool. Now, this doesn't have the impact I wanted to have here with the chords, but I also want to add crash cymbals and atmosphere. So I want to do that right now real quick. I know there's still like work to do over here, but um, I just I added like these fills here again at the end of this. So these I added here, but made them longer like they're original. Oh, and then also a funny little thing. So remember how this auto pan on the drum loop was at one eighth and like somewhere here. So I did this where it gets, it gets stronger, but then also switches to 16th notes over here. So that kind of sounds like a fill. And then we can obviously have like some riser and, and fall down there. Maybe an impact. I'm just going to grab an impact real quick. Ah, my mind is like a ball in a pinball machine while I'm producing sometimes. Let's take the classic that is loved by the community. Yay! That sounds cool. I think I have to cut this one short because otherwise this gets kind of messy. Oh, it was also this one. You're not supposed to be there. We can do a fun thing here as well where... Yo, let's just copy this frequency shifter that I put on. What did I put it on? I put it on the delay tail over here. Let's just copy this over and it'll copy the automation with it. Cool. 
cool. I do want to give some of these a little more high end. I think the pianos are fine. I think it's also that flanger thing I added that does make them sound a little more dull. Should just go to the group. Give you back a little more top end. Yeah, without this. I do like that effect though, because it like... It reminds me of Madeon for some reason. Yeah, I'll keep it like this. The crash symbols will do their job and maybe just a little bit. A little more of you. Nice. Okay, just a few more additions to the intro, then I'm really done. I've made this sample a long time ago that just sounds like this is like a big melodic mess. Of like notes in F major and then added Foley. Add a delay, add a really intense delay. So I put that in here and I reversed it. So that sounds like this. And then like this filter comes in here at the end. Yeah, fits in really well. And this corpus here that's on it the entire time kind of just this is without. And then this is with. I don't know, I just like what it does. It's static, set to one thing, it just accentuates a lot of cool harmonics. It sounds nice. And this is actually a really good moment to use uh, this amazing new plugin. I'm not advertising anything, I'm not being sponsored, not even by Raid Shadow Legends. Anyway, this is the perfect moment to use Fragments by Arturia, which is a really um, sophisticated grain delay. A bunch of really cool presets. So basically it takes little snippets of audio, little grains, scans the input audio, then turns them into lots of little grains of different sizes, like the yellow here is the randomization amount, how many, and then also random pitch. So this is set to octaves right now, so if I leave this here, that stays on the same octave, but if I go like plus 12, here the grains are like up, or we could even do two. And also there's a feedback knob, so if I just have it plus one octave, then it might go through it again and get another octave. There's a really long shimmer though, and uh, I'm just going to go into advanced mode so I can edit this a little bit better. This reverb here, for example, is on dry and wet. I just want it on the grains, just on the wet, because the sample is already so delayed and everything. That's really cool. Maybe there's one that's a little more like flicker, like more. Nope. That's kind of cool, but maybe without the quantization. Yeah, I like that. It, I just don't like that it randomizes it an octave down as well. So let's just. I guess that's fine, and I kind of like that it's rhythmical. Let's see what it sounds like in context. That is beautiful. Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna fade this the mix of this in. Yeah, that's a nice little detail. I like stuff like that. I added my classic reverse symbol. Oh, and I didn't even talk to you about the fact that I added the Amen break in here again. So as soon as this comes in here, it takes away a little bit of low end, and then I am looping it over here. And as you can see, it gets louder here at the end, and the low end comes back in, so that is just like a cool dramatic. It's like a little bit just different than just having the kick go faster and faster and faster, and faster just like uh, everyone does, so I want to try to have some variation on, on that as well. Okay, now, finally, the time has come to make the first actual bass sounds in here. 
So obviously this gap here, um, that is quite an obvious gap. Initially, I left this to be like a triplet because I did initially want a triplet flow in the drop. Maybe I mentioned that earlier. I don't know at the beginning, but now the whole intro is so like binary. Wow. So I need some bass sound that goes kukum. Wow. Maybe I will use a one-shot sample for this and then just make the wow here in Serum. Sorry that I'm using Serum so much right now for the people that want me to use other plugins as well. Uh, in the drop here, I already have a plan to use Vital. And that's extra fun because obviously you're going to get all the presets for everything that I'm making here on Patreon. And Vital is free to download, so you don't even need to pay anything to just download Vital and use the presets for me. And I'll put some extra ones in there, not just like the one or two we make right now or in five minutes, because we're going to do this one first. So we're in B, and I usually like to shape the articulation of volume and pitch first, sort of, just so I have like an idea of where I wanted to go with this sound. Wow. Never mind, I forgot this is just the wow. Yep. And uh, volume envelope here. Sounds weak, but won't sound weak in a bit, because we are going to add all kinds of fun stuff. First of all, distortion. Not doing much, let's detune this. More distortion. So these aren't beating against each other like I would like them because the distortion is all the way up, you would expect this is gonna become a Reese, but they are so stereo spread here with the width. Now they are fighting. Kinda wanna automate this. I think the sub can come back in. Yeah, if I, if I run the sub not direct out through the distortion, it just destroys everything. Let's add some white noise. Maybe this downwards movement on the pitch bend isn't ideal. Yeah, that's fine for now. Let's see what we can do here with some filtering. Obviously, all that resonance is really going into that distortion here. I might want a different LFO shape for this guy. Yeah, maybe something like that. Leave a little bit of that low end coming through. Yeah, this doesn't even need the volume automation here. This guy can stay all the way up. And maybe layer this with another kind of crunchy sound like the Evil Longries. Maybe that one can fade in. Is that even doing a lot? No, that was fine. Next up. If I add this hyper before the distortion, all those extra voices are going to get distorted and fight again, just like these two detuned voices over here. That can be fun, but gets rather messy if I put it after the distortion. It's a little cleaner. Just have this come in a little bit. Sometimes I like to do this with a dimension expander too. And now I want to try something with the comp filter. Comp filter might not be the move, but maybe... Yes, little phaser that maybe sound cool. It doesn't even need that much movement. Yeah, that is kind of fine. Maybe we can go from there and now post process. So that static phaser kind of thing, I guess it's almost like you could also use an EQ to do the same thing, but it's kind of this that Skrillex growl technique thing where you have a static phaser with, I guess, four notches. Four notches means four of these. Like basically a phaser, as we know, just looks kind of like that. Um, in the right spots to make it sound more vowel-y. I'm going to add the dynamic tube to make it a little crispier. Obviously, mini fat. That's already pretty fun. Let's try that phaser. And I don't like the new phaser, but I guess doubler has uh, some extra cool extra features. That kind of... Gives it the extra vocally sounding crunch. Fine, this is kind of cool. I kind of want to... I need more stereo width, so maybe this one. Yeah, just the second one. And then maybe you don't have to be that loud. Just come in for a second. I don't want to overdo it. Uh, I guess all that stereo width is also then getting mangled by this... By this saturator again. This is a rather messy sound. I don't know if it's up to my standard, but I think in context it might work. How's the volume? Maybe this needs more motion. Yes, and less resonance. That's kind of cool. What if we do this high pass thing that was already happening over here? Who was your modulator? This boy. One more time post distortion. 
actually a bad idea because it's going to go through another distortion. I'm just going to do that with, in this case, let's do it with auto filter. I know there's distortion in the mini fat, but yeah, this is the kind of sound I want. Just a wow. Yeah, that is cool. I'm fine with that. Let's maybe spread that second oscillator just half as much. Yeah, retains a little bit more grittiness in my opinion. And now I just need like a boom. Wow, I think I just want to do it with that same sound, but now it only does that articulation. I could have drawn like a more complex LFO that gives me the whole thing, but I'm just going to get rid of you. That's almost what I need. Let's just try and facilitate this. I'm out of filters here because uh, I now want a low pass after this, but luckily we can use the EQ as something like that. So no, no. Yeah, why not? Just for fun, what if we... What if we have amped? Kind of creates that more knocky sound I was looking for. Yeah. That's kind of what I wanted. I could layer these with chords for like maximum harmony, but we already got so much melodic stuff going on right now. Later on, we'll layer some basses with chords or do pitch map or do retune or do morph. But for now, I just want this sort of, this sort of contrast. Actually, hmm, I'm a backtrack. The stereo of it is fun, but the chords are so wide. Why not have the basses be kind of mono? Yeah, and then they could still be grittier. Yes. All right, gonna run both of these through a group so that I, first of all, can move the mini fat to the group. So I'm saving myself one of these whole effect chains. And maybe this one can have a slightly different. Nah. It sounds better when they're both the same. So move this also over before the mini fed. And then I want to EQ both of them together a little bit. I feel like they need a little bit of low end. They actually do need a little bit of boost where it usually hurts. They just got to keep up fidelity wise with the chords. Actually, this was a little much. And volume wise, then boost them a little more. All right, I've added a little drum fill at the end of this fake out, which is also from the Spicy Rhythm Drums Volume 2. Let's put stab on it and some EQ. So without it, it just sounds like... Those last two hits here, the toms are from a different fill from the same pack. And then overall, this just sounds like a little noisy. All the individual hits are hard to hear. So first of all, an EQ and then stab. This, I just love this thing. I feel like the last two are like louder than everything else. Maybe bring those down so these are kind of equal in loudness. Yeah, that's cool. But this wouldn't be complete without my signature riser, which is actually the original from a, I can just grab that, like I've remade it for my sample packs, but the original is from a push button bang sample pack called the Robo Step Effects, which actually has some cool stuff. The one I always use is this. And you've probably heard it many times in my songs. So um, this one goes right at the end of the fake out. But it has some sub that is not supposed to be there. So let's cut that off. Nice. Might even automate the volume just because it gets so quiet at the end. Cool. Speaking of automation, that bass that is supporting the chords here. Just for, as we've mentioned earlier, the contrast between sections, or like in this case, it's more like a fill. I just want to fade out the sub. Yeah, just like that. Just so we have more of an impact when the first real dubstep bass hits, which we are going to make now. Let's go. Um, I could add cymbals and stuff for the drums to make everything sound punchier, but we're going to do that later. Let's focus on a bass sound. And I did a little poll on Patreon where I asked everyone what kind of synths besides Serum would you like to see me use and dive into. And Vital was pretty much one of the leaders in the poll. I earlier today made a preset. Uh, I make this one. 
Glonk with some wavetables that Glor Glonk sent me. Uh, shout out. Go follow him on the interwebs. Good stuff. And um, this preset will also be available on Patreon. And it sounds like this. I can just have a look at what I did here real quick and explain. So I've got three oscillators and a noise. This one, that wavetable already sounds great. Super spectrally random overtones, kind of like Space Laser's DAW. And then the random overtones thing here, it selects different harmonics of that harmonic spectrum here that you can see in these tiny lines to be turned up or down. And it like chooses different ones as you move this. In the older version of Vital, it would always sound the same because like, I'll just demonstrate. As you can hear right now at this position, meh, it's very accentuated. If I go to the next wavetable, kind of the same sound for all of these. Let's go to a different position. Changing the wavetable, they all like sound the same because they all have that effect on it. But now they've added this amazing thing, this little randomize button down here. Which randomizes which random amplitudes of the harmonics are actually going to get turned up or down. So this is a great way to just um, hit that couple times, find happy accidents. I eventually landed on this. Maybe there are even better spots for this. Oh, and I want to make this louder. I'm just going to increase the unison without having detune and with no phase randomization. Then this one kind of sounded like that by itself already. Just the harmonic stretch thing here. Kind of just changes. Kind of sounds like a form and change. A sine wave for sub. And then all of this runs through this com filter. Where it's just fun to like find a good a good spot where it like hits fun resonances. Kinda takes away from the from the strength of the sound a little bit. So maybe I actually want to modulate it so it only comes in at the start. And then turns off again. And then we got some effects. A little bit of distortion. I have to say, I really don't like the vital distortion that much compared to the serum distortion. But then in turn, we have other cool stuff like this random amplitude stuff and like a lot of different warp modes that serum doesn't have. So pros and cons everywhere. A little bit of like slapback reverb, basically using a super short reverb with a lot of pre-delay time as a single slapback delay. And then good old OTT, but I've also modulated the mix. So instead of it being really sustained and kind of like super aggressive on that reverb tail, I'm just bringing this up and then bringing it down again with one of these envelopes. Nice. So that way we are actually adding dynamics back into the sound. Dynamics, but OTT. What a combination. Ah! Okay, I don't know if the sound actually works in this context, but we will try to make it work. I mean, there's not even any post-processing on this right now. Already sounds really interesting. More for like a weird future rhythmy drop, but let's see where this goes. So my idea was we'd have three hits and then like a fill, three hits, fill. And also we have to work with like arrangement wise, we have to work with something interesting here where we have these two bars. And then we got a... Wah. Like, we only have these three sections to work with. So I kind of want to copy this one over here, have some variation at these ends maybe. And then here, we're going to have four notes. Clung, 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 clung. Maybe even six. Brum, brum, and then a fill here. And these six are supposed to sound like way different than this one. So I will do what I always do. I will duplicate that patch, delete this bit, delete that bit, and then this is going to be our variation. I could also go into this patch and do that with macros by putting macros on a lot of things and then just automating that macro to go up. But I like this more as long as my CPU can take it. And just for good measure, just because the sounds are kind of similar, I'll run them through a group so I'm saving some CPU by not having to put long effects chains on each of them. We will start with the classic mini fat. Immediately brings up that reverb tail again. Eh, I don't like that. Better if I turn it down, but I'm actually going to turn it all the way down and instead use the Ableton reverb, size all the way down, decay all the way down, pre-delay. 
And before the mini fad, since there's some OTT stuff happening in here, it does make this a lot louder. So like turn the dry wet rather down and now play with the pre-delay time. So like you can hear like rah, rah. that's kind of cool. Okay, I do want to distort this more, but kind of tastefully. That is not tasteful. That's cool. Furthermore, one of my favorites, the unfiltered audio spec ops. Just gonna put that before the reverb, otherwise the reverb's just gonna be insanely pushed. Yeah, that is a bit much still. Is there still reverb on this? I think that chorus also did something for like decay time or something. And of course, I could go into the volume envelope and make it a little shorter. That's actually better. Nice. And then I will probably have to make a separate sub. Or can we just turn the sub up? Ah. Maybe not. Nah, it's getting really mangled. I'll keep it like this. So it adds to the distortion, but I will then cut it off and replace it with a separate sub. And let's just make the separate sub real quick. I do have a preset for that in my user library. I don't know if it's perfect, but let's have a look. So I'm just going to copy this MIDI over. And maybe make it a little shorter. This is probably... I was concerned this might be hitting my limiter too strong because of all this distortion happening over here, but I guess it's just the distortion. Maybe it is really messy. And now it's really just that slapback delay thing. That is a bit much. So maybe don't slap back, but very homeopathic amount. So we are definitely just going to layer this with other stuff as well. Like this needs to be noisy. Ha! We don't need to make another sound for that. We could try and use good old texture. That actually immediately kind of fixed the problem. Yeah! A godsend. Okay, let's EQ. And also check the overtones on this sub here, because this was like meant for a trap sub almost. So there is a saw being distorted here and not much else. So that will give us mostly even harmonics. And I do kind of want the odd harmonics. And I know that the saturator on soft sign will increase our odd harmonics. So this, this dip is gone. That, that was the octave. And maybe just cut off. Yeah, that's fine. Now this boy's a little thin. Maybe be generous. Yeah. Yeah, why not? That's okay. Still gonna need some layers. So I do have this little private sample pack that I started that I never gave away, but I'm super willing to give some of this away for the Patreons. It's just like this design kit with like categories of sounds and then like lots of lots of things in the same category. And a lot of these yoinks here are like really useful just on every quarter note as like background fillers. I know that one sounds kind of noisy, but it might be the right one for this occasion. So let's have a look. Do I want your fade in? Yeah, I think I do. Okay, but obviously this thing has sub, which we don't really want. All right, duplicate it under every bass hit, remove sub. And then use a frequency shifter to like kind of, first of all, just to make it brighter. And then sometimes since this has some metallic overtones, I like to get it in tune. So, hmm. So now it's kind of hitting mm, the fifth, so that is kind of nice. And then let's get rid of harshness. That sounds nicer. And since our main bass has become sort of mono, maybe I'll use the utility back on the old mid-side mode. Just to like turn the sides up and the mids down. This makes the signal a little quieter overall, so we gotta adjust with gain. Yeah, a little messy, but let's just let's just roll with it. Maybe we'll find some adjustments later when inspiration strikes. But um, this is cool for now. And then for this moment where we, I want a variation of this bass, I'm just going to automate the frequency shifter to go down from hmm to from hmm to 
Mm, it's kind of like an octave down almost. <laughs> Obviously, this guy also has to sound a little different. I'm going to do the adjustments I did earlier, where it gets a little more mono, no reverb, no chorus. And now let's hit random amplitude shuffler. Already a variation, and then maybe... Hmm, maybe... Hmm, very messy. Yeah, that's okay. If I do want the, if I do want the chorus back. Mm, it makes it so plasticky and metallic and kind of weak sounding sometimes. I guess this is okay. I will add an extra EQ for this boy because he is a little sharper than his friend. That's okay, and maybe that reverb is still doing something. You can go... There's still more tail on this. Hmm, that's where you're coming from. I guess that guy isn't the tightest. So, good old auto pen to the rescue. Now we can even turn it up. Hmm, that distortion. Maybe a bit much. Why? Is it you? Of course it is you. Maybe try a different wavetable for this. I'm gonna listen to it by itself. Yeah. Yeah, now that's in tune. And stereo white. Okay, I do want to mess around with this bass patch a little bit more with the processing. Before it goes into the group, I want to try two different things. I want to put a retune on this and some cool comp filter. So there's this plugin Shade. Let's throw some shade on this bass. I'm just going to click a few presets so you can see what this plugin does. Sophisticatedly modulated crazy filters is how I would describe this plugin. But I'm just going to use it for one purpose and one purpose only. How, how to init? Oh, here. Okay, we're just going to pick, so you can obviously like stack all of these or put them in, in sequence or whatever. I'm just going to pick a comm filter. This is like the most sophisticated comm filter. You have the width of these notches, frequency, and then the Q. Wow, we even got slope control. That is kind of fun. With those really wide slopes, it's almost like a phaser flanger or phaser comb combo. Good name for comb filter focused VST plugin. Someone make that. Let's just hear this in context and just mess around and find some sweet spots. <laughs> Hmm, that one. I wonder if it's like chopping too much away from the actual sound so that it actually ends up being thinner than it used to be before. Hmm, sounds more like a variation. We could do something like automating this off and on, like... I kind of like that. I'm just gonna go with it. Let's just do that. But maybe find an even cooler point here. That is kind of a cool spot. There's still some... Is it your reverb? Yeah, I just want this to be dry. I'm sorry. Well, let's listen. Okay, so... So the third time this comes around, this needs a variation. Maybe we can already do triplets here, like tum pa pum pa. That rhythm, but I just don't like what that sounds like. And then this would be a moment for resampling, like either freezing this thing, but that wouldn't work that well because a lot of post-processing is happening in that group. So let's make an audio track, put this on resampling, and I just want to... Yeah, just that one without the sub. So let's record that. That distortion is still a little strong, but hmm, it's okay. Leave it at that. 
Okay, so now we got our boy over here. And what I want to do is cut this one short and then mess with these with the warp algorithms, like make this guy shorter and also triplet grid up here. Triplet grid up here. It's so obviously a little quieter. Stretch again. No, maybe you over here. Just maybe something like that. Yeah, does that come out of nowhere since we have been in binary groove until now and then suddenly triplets? I need to make that yoink here. I guess that's fine. Okay, continuing. I took a little break because I was getting nervous because I didn't like where those vital patches were going. Not saying vital is a bad synth, I just haven't made complete friends with it yet. I did some minor tweaks on the sounds. And then... And this one. I replaced this background yoink with this one for over here, so... That one and then... That one actually doesn't have the auto pan and it gets a little bit of slapback reverb. Slapback reverb delay, whatever you want to call it. Also, on the entire stack of things, not the entire synth group, because maybe I want to add a layer that I don't want this effect on, I added a tape stop just on this. It's like rather short at the end there because if this was held for the entire quarter note duration, it like it's like longer than this stab and it kind of sounds awkward. This way it sounds better. But as I was saying, maybe I want something in the synth group or in the samples group, like another, just like a one shot on the drop there just to really like kick it off some cool pew yell sound or something some hype effect see what we got oh actually there are some something along these lines yeah that one's actually kind of cool and we can pitch it into the right key nope not there EQ you though, everything needs an EQ. Not being lazy today. I've been lazy in different parts already. This is... This is the drop, this requires more attention. Are we torturing the limiter? Maybe a little bit. I'm just gonna turn this down so it's not too loud for you right now. I'm gonna put ozone on this in a bit. If I was making a song at this point, I would probably already have put ozone on the master just to like get a feel for what it sounds like when it's like pushed and the multiband compression on the master is on there. Then I usually do what you shouldn't do, which is continue producing with the mastering chain on. It usually works out. I know I just do it because it's more fun. But if you don't have it on and you finish your song and the mix sounds balanced, it might not be incredibly loud and it might not be incredibly bright, then you are perfectly set for mastering and it might overall actually sound better in the end. And I used to do that back in the day. Now I just sometimes get like a little bored. So I'm like, I want to hear what it sounds like really loud. So then I put the mastering chain on and then I'm like, good to go to keep working. Some people were asking for like synth and ARP sound design. And we have done some synths here. I know I've loaded some synths as well and then just like explained what's going on in them. I haven't made that many from scratch here, so I want to make a little RP sound just for this like build-up section. So I'm just gonna go with Yep, that note didn't want to go. Um, do I want it to be eighth notes? I kinda want like a fast sixteenth notes pattern. I might just try and do this. I think that Art Melody is kind of from an Inter Shikari song. Sorry, Rao. All right, that already sounds pretty cool. I just turned up the detune and made 16 voices. And I feel like for ARPs, obviously you can pluck them with the filter by just doing this, um, LFO on envelope mode, and you go. But I like to keep them rather fresh and just instead actually just use the volume envelope. Makes them more dynamic 
and plucky. And then another saw octave up, same amount of voices, but more detune for the octave up. But you can go really crazy with the detune the higher you go. And it still sounds kind of okay. I do want to try something. I want to put an OTT on it, but... Mm -hmm. Aggressive. But then we use the auto pan again. But now all the attacks are so plucky. So maybe give the amp envelope a little bit of fade in. It doesn't really sound as if there's like a fade in. It's just like a little bit of softness. Maybe a little bit of white noise. Actually, not too bad. Since nothing's running through this filter and I don't trust the low end of this white noise, I'm just gonna have the noise run through a high pass. Yeah, you're still modulated, I'll need that. Let's check just the noise. Should you key track? Why not? Cool. Maybe even add the amp envelope. I know the amp envelope is already responsible for the volume of the noise, but if in addition to that we put it on the level, we kind of like just double the strength of that. This becomes even more plucky. That's cool. And then I will just use the internal delay here on like eighth notes and then make this one dotted, use ping pong. I think actually, I think when it's just both on dotted eighth notes, but on ping pong. This gets so bright. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe this can fade in. It sounds cool just the way it comes in, but then I would want it to get a little more, like a little brighter, a little more. Okay, so start here, and then towards the end of the build. Oh, also it's the auto pan over here, I see. Yeah, let's just automate both. Okay, so here we go. It's kind of cool how this delay is being messy here, and I have an idea what to do with it. Because that would sound cool an octave up. So I'm just going to use a, um, actually not even a pitch shifter, I could just freeze this and then work with that. Yeah, let's just do that. So freeze this, and then let's make an audio track, take this delay that's like lingering. I really like that, but what if that was an octave higher? Can I reverse this? Cool, and then fade you in so that the synth ends over here. I like that. Oh, I really also like what it does in this gap here. Maybe just delete this part of the tail, then this is the gap, and delete the rest again. So it's just. And it does, in my opinion, deserve an OTT to make it louder and show how beautiful it is. That is cool. Now let's automate the volume output here because... And that needs an EQ. It does sound a little weird, but I like it. Come on, let's just do this. And uh... Obviously this needs adjustment. Oh wait, no. you're up an octave. You're not, so maybe you should also be up an octave. Oh, yeah, very much so. And we can probably use some of this as like background ambience for the drop to like keep the melodic feeling going, but just have like, because it's so stereo wide, because it's like all delay and reverb tail, it'll add like 
It's kind of nice background ambience that just makes everything sound rather wide and fills up empty space, especially after mastering with compression, whenever there's like too much silence or something kind of brings it up again. But also we obviously don't want to over compress the whole thing. Okay, now we can unfreeze this again because we do have the reverb tail. There was one more thing I wanted to do here. Towards the end of this, maybe this one can go up an octave from... I like that reverb so much. Not reverb, delay. That I'm just going to grab that one more time for future use. It's going to come down here. We're going to turn you off for now. And I'm just going to keep this one frozen because it has 16 voices times two just to be a little nice to my CPU. All right, fun little tip. If you want to add something to a track that's already frozen, you want to like add effects, but you don't want to unfreeze it because maybe it'll sound wrong or you don't have the plugins, just group that individual track. And now you can add effects on the group. And I just realized that this one... gets rather harsh towards the end, so I just want to add one more EQ. Yep, for that. Also, while you weren't looking, um, I added an effect tricks to these chords, the just with a little bit of stuff happening. I just just to make it a little cooler, a little more glitchy. All right, so let's turn this into a background ambience thing for the drop. Starting there. Kind of want to do the octave up thing again. So I'm just going to loop this every half bar and turn the volume far down. So about at that volume, but in addition to that, um, let's add an auto pan to fade this in on reverse every half bar as well. So kind of like... And maybe the octave up was a bad idea. That's cool. If it's coming up like too early, you can just duplicate this and then move one a little bit forward. I'll just leave this like this in the background for now. And it kind of adds something. I like it. I want to keep it. Next up, symbols. Because I don't want this to take forever, I shall use some symbol loops I have made a while ago. These are from Addictive Drums, and I just exported it. Put this in the drum group, but run it through the sidechain. They're rather quiet. Turn them all the way up. Again, a job for the auto pan to cut these off after every quarter note, instead of. But that might not be enough. So let's duplicate that track and take another cymbal loop. I have cymbal loops like this in the Spicy Rhythm Drums pack as well. Yeah, something like that. And then I will also put some stuff in the cymbals drum rack over here. I got some favorites in the one shots of this pack. The weird china is kind of interesting. Messy open is fun. That one's kind of cool. Let's take the big splash and then maybe two from splice. That one. I've got room for one more, maybe this. This one's a little, a little bit on the left channel, though. Maybe move you over. Yeah, that sounds nice and wide. So with these, I would try to make a pattern that's like... So like A, B, C, B. That's maybe more useful for the snare. And then... Maybe that one for the kick. This one all the time. That one all the time. Oh, yeah. That one doesn't convince me yet. Maybe pitch it up. Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's duplicate that. EQ that. And again, auto pan. I'm 
starting to question if this background thing was a good idea. Maybe it's just the auto pan being like not the way it should be. Quarter notes, just like hum, hum, hum. Yeah, that's cool. That is a nice layer, and now it comes up in these gaps, but we're gonna fill those gaps with a sound, with a serum, to be exact. And we already got them over here, so let's just put down the notes. I think this should just happen twice, like a, another yoink here. Because then we have the... And then here, like a drum fill with some glitchy sound below it. I think that sounds reasonable. Okay, I think maybe I just feel like making some very simple thing. Let's see, like a classic FM from B with volume automation here. You're off, you're up two octaves. You get a little bit of a high pass. Yep, but we're going to make you interesting. I wonder if the rhythm shifter could change this from hmm into hmm. Yeah. Kind of here, but now it's like all even harmonics. I don't know if I like the sound of that. Maybe with a comp filter at the end here. I don't know. That's better. Also, please give me a low pass at the end here. All right, very basic. Not that basic anymore with the distortion. Now it's starting to sound fun. Now it's got sub. Now I'm going to add some noise. Yeah, rhythm shifter can stay. Without it, it's... Oh yeah, that's a lot of distortion. Hmm. Now I was just trying something. Maybe modulate this a tiny bit. Yeah, I think this is fine. Let's give it some texture with the corpus. Maybe after the rhythm shifter. And after the saturator. And now mini fat. Hmm, a little noisy. Better. What if the sub? Yeah. That is crispy. I kind of like that. I do want some width. So let's do the hyper after everything with lots of voices. Also just fading in. Maybe like that. And now let's do the same delay thing that I wanted to do in Vital here because I feel like here I got a little more control of it. That's kind of fun. That's pretty roomy. Uh, now let's EQ that. Maybe give it some aggressive like mid-lows there. Yeah, that sounds nice. Louder. All right, let's change that LFO shape to be... Where's that hmm kind of resonance coming from? Is it a delay? Yes. Oh, that sounded good and now it's gone. That's fun. Yeah, I like that. Just forward measure because I want a little bit of white noise top end, slight bit of texture. That is nice. That vital bass now just like stings compared to the serum bass. I wanted to give it a chance. Maybe if we just mess with it a little more. Maybe it's just too much smear on the on this. Yeah, that just like took away all the balls. And all the clarity. Quick little change of plans here. I want to do that exact same thing with this sound. So let's record that through resampling. Yeah, that's going in the right direction. And maybe just one semitone up. Maybe give them some sub under it. Yeah. 
Nice. All right, today is a real marathon, but don't worry, I'm taking breaks, I'm hydrating, and I've got nothing else to do today, so all good. Uh, let's continue and speed this up. I hope it's okay that I do some things off screen and then just explain them. It changed a little bit here with the... And this needs some work, which is what we're going to do right now. So arrangement right now for the drop. And then this is like a little fill hill. Mini fat, distortion. So I like using the frequency and the depth knob here, but obviously this is distorting a little too hard. So sometimes to get the most out of this, it's cool to EQ your signal before you distort it. And find the frequencies that cause this really over the top distortion that doesn't sound that good. Like now we've definitely killed them. So we can go a little harder on the distortion again. And that is kind of cool, maybe. So I got two saws here, maybe. Maybe that's actually better. I don't know about the octave, maybe just blend it in. Nice, so I wanted it to go... Mm, yeah, mm, kind of like leading into that next... Maybe that pitch bend at the end just needs to go a tiny bit higher, like... It almost reaches the... Yeah, that's fine. So for a fun Reese, I'm just gonna... Yeah, just a little bit after the serum distortion. I would like to, for this like classic Reese sound, use a flanger here. Maybe we'll just move it by hand. So I'll turn the modulation amount down. Now we just can move this. Yeah, that's kind of the motion I want. So let's just automate that. Because we're doing this pitch sweep, um, I want an auto filter again on high pass that follows that. Maybe even before the distortion, so the resonance kind of gets into the distortion a little more. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And I don't even know if that sound needs any sub. It's got this little bit of low end and then there's unnecessary rumble happening down here. That I just want to cut off. It might just be a cool break that there's no sub there for a moment. Let's see what this sounds like in context. Need some EQing. It's got to be as bright as all the other stuff to kind of keep up with it. And I think we can layer that with two chords like... Dun, dun. Also, I've also added the stab on the one here. Again over here. And now maybe... Da, da. I'm just going to draw what I think is going to be right. Just very straightforward. Kind of bro steppy, but I like it. Yeah, that works. I feel like this should be the main sound in here. There might be... Might not need the piano, or at least it's got to be up an octave, because... Yeah. Nice. And then I guess on the one here, we can have... One more of these chord steps. And just like select the entire group here, move you over. The nice thing is, because I don't have this lock button on up here, it copies all the automations with everything, so every time we have that tape stop automation still coming in. The bam. So you should come back here, and uh, same with the piano. And then maybe for the dun dun, just gonna draw in. Cool. 
Only weird thing is now we've kind of completely switched to this triplet rhythm. I don't think it's bad. And it also is like kind of useful in a set if you need a song that starts binary with just like normal eighth notes and sixteenth notes and then goes triplet and ends in triplet. So you can transition smoothly into a triplet tune because nothing is worse than transitioning from a non triplet tune into a triplet tune in a set and having them both play together. It just sounds like a train wreck if you have the percussions play at the same time. Even if it's like perfectly in sync, it just doesn't sound nice in maybe very rare occasions of my work. I just want to listen to it from over here now. We could now repeat this for some reason, just because of how I arranged this. It feels like it wants two more bars, but then the fake out again. So then we're going to make all DJs hate us because the drop is going to be these eight bars plus two, four times. So 10 bars, four times. So mixing in the next song is going to be wild. It's not impossible, but it just makes it a little more difficult. But if it like feels right for the song, then I always say go for it. Like it feels like it, there should be like another melodic turnaround to like. But I guess that's. But I guess that's that. Let's just duplicate this over here. So we already have the drums over here. Obviously, we're gonna go with different bass sounds this time. So bye bye, uh, bye bye, bye bye yoinks. And I'm gonna do the thing that I said I was gonna do where this lead second oscillator is going to go up an octave. So we're just going to automate that here. And then... And I also wanted to change the melody up a little bit, just to have these like consistent variations. Cool. While we're at it, this is just a really quick thing to do. I have these hype loops in my sample packs that um, are basically just, they're in the synth loop category. They're like something like that. There are better ones in the second heavy bass design. Synth loops, hype layers. So they're basically just super saws or lasery sounds. With a little bit of room, and then I put auto pan on them to make them a little tighter. We can make one of these from scratch, but to make them, you need lots of voices in your serum, and your computer might not like it. But we're just going to do one as an exercise so we can see what is going on in there. And I only want this to come in. I'm just going to have it play this high note. I only want it to come in after the fake out. <laughs> Yep. Sounds amazing. So, and then I will just go about making very detuned saws. Yep. And have them like do something like this. But that is not detuned enough. So you can go in global and increase the detune range. Something like that. And then also modulate the volume. So it's kind of something like that. Add some white noise for brightness. That is not very bright. We're going to do the filter trick again. Only the noise through the high pass. Much better. And then for thickness, we're just going to do another one. Same thing, 16 voices. That's why I said your CPU won't like it. Also detune. Also give this pitch modulation. This one could be an octave up and then way more detuned. And we can make it even messier with like Big old chorus, seven voices, high detune, hyper. And maybe even just for absolute messiness, old reverb filter. Don't know if this is actually a good idea. I just wanted to try it. I guess. Gives us some texture. So then we EQ that stuff. Kind of like that. This should already be enough. Let's see just what this sounds like in the background. Yeah, 
it does something. It kind of like does the like the same job as that, but that just does it in melodic, and also kind of the same job as this thing. Though this is more staccato and meant to kind of blend with the bass, this is just relentless background hype. Uh, you could even just for like subliminal hype increasement over time automate the pitch to go up throughout this whole bit. Let's just try that. Because there's so much else going on, it might even be hard to notice. But I like to tell myself that that in part because this is so stereo wide, and if you like listen to it on good speakers or in your headphones, you definitely like feel this. Just gotta make sure. This doesn't become too annoying. So since this is so detuned, you can barely tell that it's rising because there's tonality missing. So maybe... Great! That worked out perfectly. Little old school maybe, kind of 2018, 2019, but it works in this context. I'm just going to go with it. Okay, now it's going to get really fun. We're going to make one of those tear-out machine gun basses that you might have heard in my We're Not Alone VIP. But I want to make it from scratch really fast because there are two stages to this. So initially, I made the sound using kick two. So in kick two, I'd start with just like a regular kind of kick sound. I'm just going to make the one shot, like just one pionk in it. And then we're going to export that as a sample and then put that into simpler and then go from there. So there is our pionk but I wanted more lasery. And then we are going to give it a tonality by using really short delays. But multiple of them to change the... First of all, I want this to be like kind of in the key of the song. So we don't have to do any weird pitching later. There we go. So then there's another one with a slightly different time and filtered. If we change the time, you can hear how we get different overtones. Maybe 27.6. Yeah, I wanted to hit that fifth. Corpus is also going to come in helpful here, but it can be cool on the tube mode. I'm going to leave that as it is, but I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to change it to, I think, mem no, plate. Let's mess around with it. So I'm going to put it on 100% so we can hear what's going on. You hear that? Haha. Uh -huh. So we've got all these options here of like brightness, like inharmonic characteristics of the overtones. Obviously down here it like shrinks them all together so it starts to sound less bright. That is pretty cool. And then up and down here Changes another characteristic. I'm just going to leave it at that. So that can be fun to add some overtones. I think membrane was even better. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Literally sounds like someone's like hitting an anvil with a hammer or something. It's also pretty fun on low tune, but then you use the filter to only get a certain frequency range. That is cool. Nice. So this adds the little high bit, even if it's just a little bit. And then this one adds that. Fun. Next up, mini fat. And I almost forgot, maybe at the beginning of this chain, we kind of want a disperser, just so it's less of a straight up kick, but more of a pew, zap. So we're going to put disperser at the start. That is nice. Maybe a reverb at the end or before the mini fat. I know that's dangerous. Nah. Just not that long. 
and maybe just for the top end. And now we can go back to the kick and adjust. I do want it to end on D sharp since we're in D sharp. Also, the I think the spectral time can be a cool thing here to add. Not just that, but yeah, that's all right. Just a little bit of like a tail, and then cue that a bit. And I think this can still get a little more juicy. I'm just going to try this weird thing from Boom Library called, it's called Uber Loud. Literally like a one knob enhancement thing. That's kind of cool. Has a built in clipper. That sounds fun. And then we have the dry gain. Maybe we just want to mix the distortion in. Okay, cool. Um, that is fun. And I just want to try something by adding another delay. And just messing around with the time. Maybe a vocoder. We haven't used a vocoder at all today. What is going on with me? Ah, oh, yeah, I missed you so much. All right. Hmm. And OTT kind of destroys it almost. Okay, cool. This is clipping slightly here. This is fine as it is now. I'm just going to export this or let's just freeze that. And then I'll make an audio track just so we have this here. And I just want to make a quick variation. Uh, we can skip this part. I'm just going to like turn all the knobs into different positions just to find the sweet spots. I'm saving you guys 30 minutes of boredom here, trust me. All right, I've made another one and I literally just readjusted the delay times and opened the filter on these two a little more. So that's basically all I did while making the one shots for Spicy Rhythm Drums 2. And I mean all these boys here. You can kind of hear the similarities. Some turn out better than others. Uh, there are like some favorites in here. I think this one used a grain delay. I'll make one more variation. All right, that's the last one. Freeze you as well. And then we can also take some from the sample pack if these turn out to just like not work. All right, I'm just going to delete this because that's a long effects chain that is going to hurt our CPU. And then now I want to make like a stabby machine gun pattern after the melodic turnaround. So after this. Um, ta -ta -ta -tum 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 -ta -ta -ta, or something like that. So I'm going to drag one into an empty MIDI track so it's in a simpler, and I'm just going to draw that rhythm, the set of the triplets. Dun, 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 so we're going to gonna have a different sound here, or maybe just to change up the snare to like a massive pan snare. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so arrangement-wise, maybe... And then a variation here. Da, da, and we got. Hmm, I don't want to do that again here. I just want to have it like a super screechy riser or something. So you guys have to leave in the next section. That can happen again. And now we need one more where we're going to use a different one. Also, completely change up the pattern. So let's just move the second one in here. Maybe. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da and then we can have like a long drum fill here with some down after like okay but these are cool but by themselves right now kind of stop they kind of still sound boring sure they do sound a little big but i said there is a second half to this so i really like running them again after this through spec ops to really Crunch the crap out of them. And maybe even before spec ups, give them either a little bit of multiband compression. So the. Nah. I do want the dynamics. 
maybe instead just have a little bit of EQ so that sub isn't gonna like dominate that distortion. That is grimy. And then we can go in here and make maybe make this faster with a warp mode. Like, oh, because it's that's why it wasn't working. Yeah, on tones kind of sounds nicer. Texture kind of sounds different with every hit. No. Sometimes complex is cool, it reduces the quality, but sometimes that can sound really nice. Oh, and I almost forgot the most important part. So this is obviously going to be layered with a couple of things doing the same thing. The first thing being just like a little lasery zap. Remember the one from that sample pack of mine? Ooh, I think it was the first one. So effects, one shot, and we got that little zap. That should be enough. So I'm just going to copy this MIDI over here and make sure that you're in the right pitch. Yes, you are. Nice. I might even duplicate this, like group this and drop another sample here. And one of my favorites is just this little one shot here. Obviously pretty long, so again, make shorter with warp or pitch up without any warp so that it gets faster automatically. Now EQ8. And maybe even uh, spread this. So that is wide because our bass is pretty mono. Nice little noise layer. Next fun thing to process this bass even further is... That sounds fun, but that's not where we're going. Add the hybrid reverb. This would actually probably be fun if... You can hear that has a lot of low end. We just... Just cut that off. So just a little bit of that might actually make this sound less mono, a little more stereo because it's a really tight reverb. But the real fun is now taking something like really dissonant, like a ploink snare, for example. Let's look for one in the Spicy Rhythm Drums pack. Ha! So I make that really short. And changing the size. Again, now this is about finding the sweet spot where it aligns with the key we're in. Mm -hmm, that kind of works, but I want to try if I can hit. Or... Yeah. And we can EQ this. Now it's yeah, overpowering the bass almost, so... Let's dial that back. Uh, I haven't listened to the song in long enough, so it's out of key. Mm -hmm. Needs to go down a semitone. See if that works. The thing is, with this really low, the bass sounds punchy and dry and nice and crispy, but we can't really hear the sound of this reverb. But uh, as soon as I go to a range where we can hear it, we lose our beautiful attack. So we could either try, and I haven't done it this way before, but let's see what happens. Paralleling this. Kind of works. I am going to revert this now because my method in the We're Not Alone VIP was having one of these really tight and then just duplicating that bass patch. So this one's going to stay the way it is, but then we're going to duplicate that. I should probably hit save because I just feel like I'm doing so much, this might crash. Who knows? And then let's import the third of these boys that we've made. Where'd you go? Did I overwrite you? Did I delete you? What did I do? No. I lost them. It's fine. <sighs> I think we still have this one down here, so that's okay. Let's just copy this boy over. Can I do that? Yeah, it replaces it. Okay. <laughs> Make it faster. No, unwarp, please. Yes. That is a lot of sub. 
and a lot of muddy stuff over here. The sub can be a little louder because that's what we need for our distortion. It's already pretty crunchy, but yeah, maybe it ends with so much low end. Maybe there's a way to have a high pass filter. Get rid of that at the end of each sample playback. So we're going to use the envelope and then um, I think I just need to, oh, just like that. That kind of did the trick. Yeah. I feel like this does need some noise and I will now use erosion just for variety. Even though texture sounds better. Just so we have like used a bunch of different things. And I know a lot of people might not have texture, so you can replace that with erosion. But also, when I put this project file on Patreon, I'll freeze all the tracks that have third-party plugins on them. So you should be able to open everything at home and it should work. Also fun here is to use the expand or compress algorithms. <laughs> Obviously it makes it messy. You can you can hear the the transient is kind of gone. Contrast, that's fun. Or uh, where we had compress. Ah, compress is fun if you only put it on this like that low bit and keep the top end unaffected. But the point of this exercise was that this one is supposed to not have any sub and it's supposed to be a lot more roomy. So the size here and the decay is going to go up. Kind of like that. Yeah, that's cool. And then let's use a different sample here as well for the convolution sound. Let's try that. Very aggressive. I know. So uh, let's work on that. Kind of something like that. Now layered with that really dry sound, we can play around with the size of this guy's convolution reverb to find like a pitch that works with it. Close. Yeah, and then we have our laser. Hell yeah! Group them all together for group processing with EQs, just... To eradicate some really... Annoying frequencies. And... Since this one doesn't have low end, we can... Sometimes you can like play around with the pitch or make it make even shorter so we can hear more of this. I do think the convolution sample is a little too noisy, or like too atonal. So I'm gonna look for one more. This one's very distorted, but it might work. As you can hear, my CPU is dying. Let me increase the buffer size. Yep, I like that. Sorry, that took forever. So since the second part of the drop is a lot more evil than the first one, I want to exchange some of those background layers, like that melodic arp I got rid of, but instead we're gonna use this like choir sample that I found on Splice that I really like that I've been like putting in the background kind of everywhere. It's like these two, but the second one is very dissonant. So this one, not during the chords, but here, and it is one semitone too high, so, oh no, two. So I just have this playing in the back for these six bars, and I'm gonna duplicate that and have this one an octave up. Don't need a warp because I think it's long enough. Yay! So we've got these two. It's 
group them so I can EQ them together. Lower those frequencies there, and that is just constantly in the back, a little quieter. On top of that, because it's getting darker, maybe, this one can go up in detune for more terror feeling. It's getting a little hard to hear what it's doing, so maybe also... Yeah, turn that reverb filter down, so automate that macro. Alternatively, also for variation, so it's just, you can just... Or lower. I think lower sounds cooler here. What I haven't addressed is, because I was feeling bad about it, the snare is not the best snare in the world. Let's try to layer some of the snares we made in the last episode and... Hmm. It kind of works for this first drop, maybe. But also, overall, the drums are too quiet. So now I'm kind of running into gain problems a little bit. I guess, for good measure, we can... Um, it's gonna consolidate these and, and select them all and just give them a little bit of a volume boost. Better, but that, that snare... I guess this kind of made it worse. Like, that's our main snare, boy. Does he have to be lower, like that, that low end? Is that too high for a dubstep tune in D-sharp? I know the legend was always 200 hertz for the snare oomph, but... That's in D-sharp now. Nice. And then some transient designing here, maybe. Maybe slightly longer decay. And let's see if we can... Yeah, I guess somewhere around there. Also, I feel like, because... Oh, God, this is... Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. I, that's why it doesn't sound fun. Without it. Okay. Yep, I messed up. Made the snare way too loud because I forgot I had that limiter on there. So first of all, dial all this back. Dial you back a bit. Mm, dial you back. Actually, you were fine. I think it's this. And the output. Okay, how does the full thing sound in context when we are... I'm just going to turn this down, but we're going to clip straight into the master, so beware. <laughs> Sounds way better. Snare is punchy, is clipping. Uh, you can kind of see when the kick hits, it kind of clips at plus 3.9. When the snare hits, it clips at 6. Uh, oh, even, okay, even. Okay, kick actually clips at 5. That is fine. In Pray for Rhythm, the snare was clipping at plus 13, and it was okay. But it really depends on your mix, and do want to give this a little more, just a little more tail. Please. Yeah, just something like that. Is that even audible? Yes, but it's kind of too long. That should be enough. Okay, time for some like additional little drum hits here. Ah, yeah, we're in triplet band, I forgot. Maybe not that. Yeah, maybe that. So for these kind of ghost kicks that are just like a little quieter or like boom, for those kind of things, I usually don't set a side chain. Maybe the one in front of the snare also doesn't need one. Because then otherwise, otherwise it's like a side chain hit here and a side chain hit there. It's like everything else is quiet for this entire time. That's a bit much. So let's just update the sidechain for that bit. 
So that's the only one we really need to add. Okay, remove that snare, remove that trigger, and then we're just gonna have a little drum fill here with a classic trap snare. You know exactly which one I'm talking about. It might just take me a moment to find it. This one, and then we're just gonna do Ow, 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 ow. You're loud. Cool. You need like some rising elements to bring us into that. This one appears twice. I don't want that. Yeah, now it's kind of odd that this is binary. So we kind of have to roll with the uh, ow. And now this fill needs to be triplet -y. I think I have some triplet fills in the spicy rhythm drums. Drumming spicy rhythm fills. That's triplets. In the right tempo even. Yeah, mm, this EQ kind of works. How is it without it? Maybe just a little less, like... Yeah, and some sort of riser. I had another one here that was fine. Like, obviously we got this backwards boy. Which I do want to use again. But shorter. Yeah, all about the glue. And uh... No, you are not the one I was looking for. This one. I should add locators at this point, so I can see where I am. <laughs> Gotta get a little harder here with the symbols maybe, so it's not just... And also harder with the snare. The ones I made in the last episode might not be enough for where we are going here. Let's try working with something like that and uh, see where we're going. It is very aggressive, I know, and it does need some taming. Again, we can pitch this down to... So now that low end is where we need it, but also all this top end ring has now pitched down and sounds even wonkier. So instead I'm going to use a frequency shifter. Because all these low frequencies like move faster, because it shifts everything by 30 hertz. So these uh, 190 hertz are now 160 hertz. <laughs> so that is a way bigger difference than if you have a frequency up here that's like 10k and now it's just... 9,970. So you do need a noise layer, in my opinion. Still. Something like that. That tail is just so loud. Okay, let's try our distortion technique again. Ah, oh, loses all the transient. Spiff, can you help? Yes, actually, it does something. And this one's not helping, but it might in a different pitch or something. So moving it over and using that, maybe in here with... Yeah, that's better. Can even be louder. Oh, it's going through 100% OTP. Do you have a fade in? You do. That's already a little bit better. Maybe we can also use the tail of this one. I just want to try it out. So I'm going to start it a little later, fade it in, cut off the lows. Since I increased the like size of this, now I have to scroll through this so much more. Oh, I should probably add you.
What happened to your transient? Did that get weaker again? Just messing around. No abort mission ploink snare. I was gonna go with Dratsch snare. Can never go wrong with Dratsch snare. Doesn't even need spiff or a frequency shifter. Actually really loud. Might profit from a little bit of fade out. Yes, maybe a tiny bit of frequency shifting. Yeah. And now we got that. It technically still is a ploying snare. Yeah. Shorten your tail too. There's still this layer, which isn't really needed anymore, I think. Sounds fine like that, just a little quieter. Yeah, there we go. I have a feeling that the second half is way louder than the first. Okay, not way louder. Cool, this boy is too quiet. I think the chords are too, and the buzz bass. The wee wee, that's really cool. It's kind of quieter than the previous bass. It doesn't really matter how loud I send it into this anymore now. Um, so I guess I just have to automate this group just to be a little accommodating to this next bass. And what is happening here with that? Is that a d is this or is this thing? Is this thing going up? It kind of sounds like a delay. I do want to fade in a delay here to the end of this. We just try this. So just on quarter notes, on like eighth notes, it's going to clash because we're in triplet land. <laughs> That's cool. So you just join in here and then and on top of that, I'm going to try and add that rhythm washout on just that delay tail because that's all we're hearing at the end there. And maybe that's cool. And I just put it somewhere where it doesn't belong, I think. Oh no. Yay. Okay. Let's do that. Um, just for this bit. Yeah, I like that, but maybe. That's cool. I'm fine with that. Maybe also some auto pan to the rescue on triplets. You just come in here. I know I could just turn the device on and off, but I don't know. Maybe I need to automate this. Who knows? So with auto pan, after a lot of plugins, you kind of have to be careful because the timing can be off because of latency. Yeah, that's better. And I know I'm just like adding effects after effects, but that's why I like Ableton. Go down. Yeah, that's cool. Reflecting on how the workflow on this has been so far, I probably should have used one of Mr. Bill's methods where um, he like sets a timer for let's say 10, 15 minutes, and it just keeps going. And every time it rings, whatever you're like currently focusing on, if you've been doing the drums for 15 minutes, then you go and do something else, like the bass or the synths, or you write like the next part so you don't get stuck on stuff. I feel like I've been getting stuck on just the like this one bass for half an hour. Okay, let's move forward though. Um, we still need this variation bass down here, and I'll be a little quick. Also, we now have some layers already. We got our zap, and then... I've like upgraded this a little bit by just changing the size here and making this the kind of wet one. I might even make it a little 
more roomy with a uh, reverb as well. Let's see what it sounds like if I put this before the distortion. Fun, that's what it sounds like. Okay, remove sub. Rule of thumb, which I don't follow all the time either, as you can see here. If you take something out with an EQ, use narrower peaks. If you add something, use wider curves. Something I remember from university. But if it sounds good, it sounds good. That is another rule that like trumps everything else, I think. Okay, now we just need the dry and punchy one. So I'm going to duplicate this thing, turn this down, turn the decay down, move this back behind the distortion, give the sub back. Uh, don't know if we'll need these. And I'm going to pick one of the bass shots from Spicy Rhythm Drops. This is, this is one too. I think this is World Ender Dry D Sharp. So we've used that one. Oh, that one. And then maybe... These are all great. Let's take that one. I, I put it in the wrong sampler. Okay, here you go. Mm-hmm. No, not that much. Also, it sounds like the low end on this one is not... Mm, this one sounds like it's... Da -da -da, so bring you down. Yeah, that sounds better. Also, you sound messy. Because of this. Could we... That is kind of cool. Losing a lot of top end. A lot of transient. Might be an opportunity for spiff. That works again. Let's also try a vocoder. Ah, the solution to all problems, sometimes. Now that we have the vocoder, I'm inclined to put texture in front of it. So in general, that's kind of nice, but it's like too sustained, so... So I'm going to use the sidechain for only the high frequency, so... This should... Oh, it's not on. Yeah, now it's a lot more percussive, so... Mm -hmm, that's a little too much. Yeah, the reason why I put this in front of the vocoder is the vocoder kind of also does this kind of like noise reduction or like release reduction unless we turn the release up. Now you hear that release tail of the noise. Which is fun. I like to keep it tight. So maybe actually after is the move. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. That is a nice texture. Oh. Yeah, and out of key. Da. Mm, da -da -da. That's not what I want, is it? I guess it's this. Almost. Mm, oh, it's still too high. Yeah, that's better. Mm. How did that happen? Yes. Maybe not that much. Yes. Okay, now time for the hybrid reverb. Not helping, probably because it's in front of the vocoder. Like, it's supposed to add, like, a little bit of stereo width. Let's just throw in one of the spicy rhythm drums. Oh, I totally forgot. You can just, like, swipe through the folder of whatever file you dragged in here. And just try them all out. Mm hmm, that's nice. Also, uh, this has a feedback knob. And then the pre-delay kind of determines the feedback time. So this is this kind of adds another layer of tonality. Just a little more metallic. But that is cool. I like that. It could be more stereo wide, but this is in key now though. I like the sound, but it's gotta work in context and it can't be too loud.
and then this one isn't too nice. Maybe it's already better. Yeah, and I'm just going to increase that stereo thing. Mm -hmm. Nope, not you. Cool. Now we need to uh, add these little fills here. And just because we've been taking so long, I'm going to grab some like samples and stuff from my private collection. It's going to add a sample track. And I have made all these Reese's, which we can also do in another video because that is another 30 minute tension probably that I then have to edit into five minutes if I can. Here, heavy Reese. Yeah, these are fun. Maybe speed them up a little bit because this one goes down at the end there and it's kind of cool. Mm. That's cool, but it gets messy at the end, but we can work with that. So it kind of has this... Kind of is in the triplet feel, so we're going to accentuate that with our old friend on triplets. Just going to bring that in halfway through. And saturate with an EQ before. Just, just to see if we can push this more for coder. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe a flanger. Not at 100%. And automated. Has lost a lot of its tonality. Gotta bring that back. Yep. Okay, last little detail. Dun, 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 dun. Just wanna automate this to go super fast here. And it has to be at 100%, otherwise, you can't hear it. Just gotta try it out and see if it sounds good. After like all this processing, I have the feeling that I should move this to the end of the chain. Kind of. Maybe right before the vocoder. Oh, I duplicated it. Yeah. That's cool. But also, it also might require just a hint of texture. Once again, I should just make it a fall preset that's kind of set up like this. All right. Last little thing to add a little more character. Maybe. Yes. You can always count on Corpus. I keep getting stuck on things and I don't like it. Something I want to add is because, especially in that second half we have right now, it feels like very like heavy and. So, kind of want like some group vocals that go like. Kind of like 300 vibes or something. I still haven't said locators. So starting here. And I think one of the cashmere packs has something in like the world vocals or something. So let me see. I think it was the latest one. Goes in the right direction. Maybe that one. Maybe that one. That kind of the first one like that. That goes in the right direction. Fade that out. I guess we're just going to work with these. These three should be enough. Okay, so let's see where you go. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be on every beat. Like, who? Ha. Pause. Ha. And these are, hmm. Maybe a little lower. And we can make him sound bigger. What's this? G, but it's kind of messy. This is going into the Viking step direction of Samplifier. Ah, G. Guess that's enough. 
And then I do want to OTT them, but I don't want all this noise here to get OTT'd. I'm too lazy to cut off the tails, so reduce ambience first, then OTT. This should work. Nice. And I want reverb and EQ before the reverb. Yeah. Maybe make this one lower as well. Yeah, that's kind of kind of dark and ominous. I like that. What if these had a um, yeah, a little bit of form and tracking there is kind of nice. And then stereo widen that a little bit. Maybe actually with a chorus this time. So it sounds like more people. Actually going to use that ensemble. Nice. Just mix it in slightly, like minus three, that's good. Okay, I don't know for how many hours I've been doing this now, but I'm at the point where I need to put my mastering chain on to motivate myself to finish this. Get rid of the stock limiter. I have a slight bit of volume automation, there's not much happening. Uh, we got that stereo width automation here for the buildup. I copied this over here because I didn't want to like lose that melodic vibe. Like I listened to the intro again and then we ended up here in like metal land. Uh, I don't know how that happened. Okay, back to the regular scheduled programming where I'm going to add my mastering chain. So usually I have a little bit of the standard multiband compression preset on here. Just add like 10 to 20% depending on how much I feel like it. Sometimes not at all. And then I use Ozone 9. I know Ozone 10 is out, I think. The changes are so minute. This is fine. And sometimes I use Soothe before Ozone. But I think this is fine. I have I was trying to make sure that nothing is too harsh, and I don't think we need it. And uh, so let's just let's like go in here because this is like the first loud part. So usually I only use these three modules. I'm gonna add the imager as well before the dynamics, and then I've got a mid side EQ where this is like a bug. Sometimes it doesn't show the analyzer. There it is. Just making sure there's like no sub in the sides. Usually the sides can be a little fresh up on the tops. I think I should just do this on the drop because... I feel like in F, in like G minor and F minor dubstep, 400 hertz was kind of the muddy region. I feel like now we've drifted so low, D, D sharp, now it's like around 300 it feels like. So I always like taking something out there. Let's see what the imager says. I'm just going to create some arbitrary bands. The sub is a mono, very nice. This looks nice. Sometimes I give this a little bit of a boost, like between 10 and 20. Very nice. So this little correlation meter here, that's what this is, means that in the frequency region from 7k to, uh, to like the top, which I've soloed right now, Stereo signal is like perfectly wide, and if it's up here, it means it's mono. That means the wave on the left channel is exactly like the wave on the right channel. If it's all the way at the bottom, that means the wave on the left channel is completely inverse to the wave on the right channel. And that means if you would play your song in mono, um, you wouldn't hear anything, at least uh, over here. So um, that is important, and that's why the low end should be like stuck up here. If this was down here and you played this in mono, there'd be no sub. And I have made that mistake before. I uh, The Lana Del Rey remix, the Ultra Violence remix from back in the day. The massive patches in the second drop, the sub is kind of gone in mono. So there's not really any need to, to boost that anymore. Like if I boosted the stereo width here, 
Now we're like an anti-phase region. That, that's just not good. Nobody wants that. Then in the multiband compression section, I uh, have four bands, sub, mids, high, mids, very highs. And um, sub is rather compressed with eight to one, all these melodic mids with a easy three to one for pop. I sometimes do two to one. Um, then the sharp top four to one and the very high end seven to one. But, oh, yeah, there, that's, that's a lot of compression going on there. And it does sound a little bit dull overall to me. So what I like to do with the top bands here is I like to parallel process them. So this is only 90% wet and then this one maybe on 75. So instead of like blasting more high end into it with an EQ before, I just turn down the intensity of this compressor, but not really the intensity. It's just as intense as it was before, but I'm just like running the uncompressed signal parallel, 40% uncompressed, 60% compressed. And then I just use these kind of to EQ my signal. <laughs> Like, that sounds fine. I like that. Also, just for like good measure, sometimes I automate this. I like to give the sub band an extra decibel of gain after the compression. And then we come to the maximizer that I have on IRC4 Modern with the fastest release time. And then I just pull this down until up here I got like minus 3, minus 2.5. And then usually, very nice delay. And then usually I, I put this on one, but I turn on gain match and then I turn this off. So what this does is it's not using the maximizer. It's not limiting anything, but it is boosting it by like 5.8 decibels just to like make up for that loudness that would be missing if I turn it off. So see, it sounds the same as soon as it's off. But now we are clipping. But it sounds fine, so why not? And also the transients um, sound snappy. I still feel like there's enough headroom to give the sub a little more. This actually sounds really good. I am surprised how this mix turned out in just this one session. So now why I move why I moved this uh why I moved this release fader back to one is because I like to automate this maximizer turning on and off. So up means it's bypassed, down means it's not bypassed. So for the intro, I like it to be on because there, there might be like moments where there's just something melodic and a sub or like a vocal and a strong sub. And then if that limiter isn't there and it's clipping, you will hear the vocal getting distorted. Sometimes it sounds fine. And sometimes you don't even notice it on your monitors. But if you listen to it on headphones, it becomes so apparent and it is so annoying and frustrated me for the longest time. So I've just decided to have that limiter on. And also if, if this is on zero, it'll still like crunch and have like... A little bit of distortion artifacts on one, it's a little safer. Like up here, it's getting safer. Up here, it like gets quieter, like it really limits the mix down and it starts pumping and it doesn't sound that nice anymore. Now I have the release time on here. And then on the drop here, I would... Oh, that's also why it's quiet. Ah, I am stupid. And then on the drop here, we would hit bypass. Okay, it is time. Let's listen to the whole thing. Do we have any cool analyzer to look at? I want to give you guys at least like some eye candy. I guess I can give you guys the LFO tool waveform. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so we have that. I can, we can resize that. Beautiful. And then besides that, do I have anything else? I don't have the, do I have the ozone meters or something. Maybe insight. Maybe that works. Yep, it crashed. Eh. Okay, so no isotope inside, but I'm just going to have a spectrum here and then we're going to have the beautiful LFO tool over yonder. And then this way uh, you can still see everything of this beautiful project file. Also, I've added a few little things here and there to finalize it, mostly in the intro. Let's see if you notice them and if you do, put it in the comments, like whatever new things you find. Comment engagement. Yeah, what an idea. Okay, cool. Let's go.
shutting down. Yay! Ah, enough! Okay, I think we can call it a day.